Hi, everybody, and welcome back to this episode of Dungeon Hunters Tales from the Vale, Realm of the Dead. I'm very excited for you to experience this episode three. And without further ado, let's meet our cast. Hi, everybody. How are we doing tonight? Hello. Hello. Doing good. Fantastic. Well, without further ado, I would like to introduce you to the cast one by one and have them tell you who they are playing. And we will start with Ray with a Y. Ray, how are you? Great. I'm I'm just I'm ready. I'm ready for for this next episode because I don't know. I'm just really excited. I don't really have much to say right now. <laughs> you don't you don't know why you're ready? I'm just really ready. I'm I'm re I'm ready, Ray. Yeah, that's I'm nice. ready. I'm so. extremely ready for what I don't know, but I'm I excited to ready. die. Perfect. And who are you playing tonight? I'm playing Ingram Corbinwall, the unlikely ally to the party. Um, my dad's an asshole. Best way to describe daddy. Fantastic. Ray, thank you for joining us tonight. I'm excited to see uh, all that uh, Corbin Mole gets up to. And next, we will go to Squid. Squid, how are you? Sup. Just chilling, you know, drinking beer, hanging with my friends. I uh, play Alistair. And yeah, man, that's me. Fantastic. And I'm now ready. we will. Huh? I'm ready. For what? Being ready. We don't know, man. Where We're is the ready. horse and the rider? <laughs> Where is the horn that was blowing? Uh, <laughs> fantastic. And also uh, playing in this cast, I want to welcome Ray with an E. Ray, how are you? Oh, hey, I'm Ray with a brick with two Ks. Um, hi, everyone. I'm doing. I'm doing great. Uh, this whole like everybody being ready makes me think of a really old pop punk song. That went, hey dudes, are you ready to? So now that's gonna be my call for the whole night. Um, chunk, hi. no Captain Chunk. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> the, French, okay. the French, um, name. I play Lovey Elbrixis, the offbeat eccentric who likes to talk to animals, but nobody really believes that she can talk to animals. Uh, she's great, I love her. Um, I'm really excited to hopefully survive the land of the dead. Woo. Fantastic. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm excited. And last but certainly not least, Brad. How are you, Brad? I am great. And I'm playing uh, James Leland. Uh, he's a firstborn. Of, he's the first of his family to uh, be able to use magic. And he just really wants to uh, wants to show everybody at school. At, the school that he's worth it doesn't know why he has it but interesting well perhaps in this episode we will figure out how he has these powers and what those powers mean in this episode of tales from the veil vale, realm of the dead the last we left our party They had solved an intricate little puzzle, defeating the three-headed dog. Uh, these animated suits of armor that protect the stone tablet in which encase their very mortal souls to return them to the realm of the veil. We see now upon this area, this space in which your party resides, the dust is beginning to clear through the air. Ingram, you have just seen a quick flash of the death of your mother. And Lovey, you were able to see it through the tower. Ingram, what are you doing in this moment as you lie on the ground face down in the dirt? Uh, I So Ingram is going to get up and kind of like brush off, make sure he, like he's okay. Um, looking at that, was it like almost as if it were like the man, uh, getting out of the horse? Was it like, it was like tangible to be able to see that? It seemed like it was almost in a realm of, of black and white with the, mm. these dark streaks kind of around it, almost like a dream. 
Okay. Um, so he's, he's probably just going to just kind of think to himself and very confusing. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm alive in here. Are you guys all right? You hear him. Yeah, yeah. we're, we're all right. Where are you? Yeah, yeah, in the tower. Yeah. You're in the tower? Come on out. Wait, oh. are you under all this? And I'm going to start, like, pulling and trying to, like, clear stuff away and trying to find him. Okay. I help and start moving Rebel also. Same. Perfect. Uh, then I will need all of you to give me bronze checks. A brawn check. The DC for this is going to be an eight. Hmm. <clears throat> Nice. I got a six on my D6, so that explodes. Um, Correct. I, I, and a I four, so a, that's ten. Uh, I rolled a uh, oh, I rolled a big old two. Me too. I rolled two. a ten. I'm not very strong, so you know. You kind of uh, begin, James, as you're kind of trying to break off a piece of this tower. It's not quite working. As Lovey kind of comes over and puts her hands into the crevice of this rock that's kind of over Ingram and begins to move it. Alistair, you kind of come over and help move the rock as it <laughs> ships off and falls to the ground. And you see Ingram there laying in the dirt, dirt covering his very prestigious robes. As you look at him, uh, what would you like to do? Oh, well, are thank you. you, and I'm just gonna extend a hand down and try, like, pulling him out. Yeah, and I'll kind of just... I, I saw something in, in the tower. I'm gonna lean in close as I'm, like, pulling him out, kind of, like, at in that moment that, like, I pull you up and out and you say that, as our faces brush each other, She'll whisper, I, uh, I saw it too. And like, lift you out and kind of like, release your arm, let you stand for a moment and back up towards everyone else. Alistair. And I, I begin to describe the, the, the man that I saw. You had only seen like the behind of him just a darkened vision that was blurred almost. But you did hear a name. That was Lord Well. Someone with your name killed my mother. Your, your, your family's name, I should say, not yours. And I'm not sure what to do with that information. Alistair's just kind of staring at you. It, it wasn't... It wasn't like how it was with... with the horseman or... or, or but it was, it was as if it, was a, it were a dream or something. Hmm. It wasn't really my business to... Uh talk about but you, you probably saw my dad wait he, you your father killed my mother uh y yeah what Your father held it over my father's head. Why, what do you mean he held it over my father, or over your father's head? That's all I know.
and I'm uh, he, he's just gonna like drop down and just kind of sit down just kind of bury his face in his hands as you bury your face in your hands Alistair the expanse grows dark you see the figure hands and head er, head and hands and you see your father. What have I done? What did she mean? You see the figure begins to form into mist. You see a woman laying there. You see your father begin to approach and kneel down. I'm so sorry. My lady, I'm... She just kind of looks up. And you can hear... Her whisper... Into his ear. And she says... The wife of the viper dies so that the world might change. Tell them the truth. As her life leaves. You see your father move the hair out of her face. As you see the blackened charred hole in her center mass, where this death bolt carved through and struck true. You see your father holding his wand. What have I done? You have done as instructed. As he turns. I will tell them. He whispers to the body. <laughs> the vision fades as you see Ingram, head in hands. I'm going to go squat. Not directly next to you, but in your vicinity, Ingram. And just whisper. I didn't know. I didn't. I believe you. I'm sorry for not telling you, but... Fuck, you're, you're the only friend I've had in years. It was selfish of me. We are not our fathers. We're not. We're just a product of the sins that they've made. Um, I did just see something. And it was your mother's last moments. And she told my father, um, she said, the wife of the viper must die so that the world may see change. Or might see change. And then your father appeared. And then that was it. Did anything else, was it said? Uh, it was my father apologizing and crying and kind of your father menacingly standing there waiting so my father did have something to do with my mother's death he hired my father to do it 
It's the only reason why I'm able to go to the school. That bastard will pay. One way. I'm or sorry. Show me you're sorry by joining me in bringing my father down. We must survive this. I'll kind of stand and just hold a hand out to get you up to your feet. Um, yeah, I'll accept it. Lovey, you are hearing this. The whispers of the cats validating. There are bigger things at work. You're finding that the whispers of the animals you've spoken to, whether recognized or not, it's real. Now, if only anyone else believed. James, what are you doing in this moment? I've kind of just been, with this whole time, been sitting and listening and just just in in kind of in shock at the news honestly like just it's it's a crazy thing to hear i'm just sitting down and making sure i was sitting kind of sitting next to ingram not i didn't want to wasn't pushing boundaries i was just sitting next to you kind of making sure you were okay and after hearing that just kind of like sit just sitting there just there's you know family beef here <laughs> do you say anything um, I look. I look at Ingram and just. I'm. I'm sorry that. I'm sorry for both of you. I'm sorry you guys are dealing with this. We do need to get out of this. I wanna. I. I look at Ingram and just. Let's. Let's. Let's take your dad down. I think that's. Uh much bigger journey than surviving the land of the or the, the realm of the dead or wherever the hell we are we need proof and who's going to listen to students who died and went to some unknown realm that only the dead know about i have been studying a spell in the forbidden section of the library you dirty dog. I've been letting him sneak in there every night. I'm going to pretend that that wasn't said. Uh, Ingram. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been uh, I've been studying a, a spell called Mind Siphon. Where I can pull memories from somebody. Really? I've been trying to study it so I could remove the memory of my father's misdoings from him. Is your father still alive? Are you able to show these memories to other people? I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. Well, well I mean, they have to go somewhere. Can't just pull them out and then they're just like float in. Well, no. I don't know I, if he was pulling I, him into his own head. I hate to ask this, but can I can I practice on one of you in case we need it and while we're in here? Yeah. Go for it. I mean If you feel that you're ready to to do this on, on a alien, yes, you can try it on me. You can dig around in my brain I, if you want. I think You can use the Nami over there. Might be easier. I think James. Call me that. <laughs> Since I don't know, I, I I feel like if this were to work, I want James to be a part of it. Since he's been sneaking me into the forbidden section. Yeah, but what if he forgets everything? I have a lineage that I can rely on. He's the one of only one of his name. Pull from me. I can't. What if, what if he tries to pull one from him I, and, and I, I point can't. to I If point I'm the to... first if I'm the first person to succeed in casting this, I want 
the person who aided me to be a part of it. Go ahead, man. And I just walk. I, I, I walk towards him. The man, I so walk towards I... him and go. Dig in my brain, man. I don't like this. I don't like this. I sit down. I, okay. Is there like is there like a log or like a boulder or anything I can go sit on? Like there's, there's rubble pieces. all around you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I go. I just go sit down and just sit down and get ready for him. Just what. Well, do 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 your worst, man. If you do, you want me to write or lovey write down anything that you want us to pass along, just in case you don't make it. I the side effects I've studied are not death. death. Yeah, and to who? I'm not saying it's death, but if he but loses himself, it's just you guys, man. It doesn't I, cause madness either. My family doesn't even. Hey, I'm disowned. I'm just gonna write your name so you at least remember that. Okay. I just write James Leland really I, large on the okay. paper. I pull out my grimoire. Like a chauffeur at an airport. <laughs> James <laughs> Leland. <laughs> I pull out my grimoire and just hold my hand out towards his head. Okay. Lovey, as you pull this out to begin to write James Leland's name, something escapes your bag. James, you've known it all too well. The Forbidden Scroll, the ones you were hunting in that library. How did it make its way here? Is it <laughs> flutters out into the air? You go to grab it. And it escapes. Can I try and cast a spell on it? What are you trying to cast? It's a spell I've only cast a few times. It's okay. not something I've mastered. I want to cast a spell called Gravity Well to try and pull it to the ground. Okay. As you cast this, we will get into the mind spell, but you're going to try and cast this. I'm going to say, since you were trying to grab it with the gravity well and pull it back in, this will be a fight check. Okay. You may use your magic die. Now, okay. this is unnatural, so it starts at a base of three. Okay. This is a tiny effect, or area of effect, so that will be a four. The duration of this effect, you want this to happen instantaneous, correct? Yeah. So we stay at a four. Now, how experienced are you with this spell? I've cast it a good number of times. I wouldn't, not near, near a master. I would, it's a spell I learned. I, I was, it was an interesting spell to me because of my levitation. Perfect. Then the difficulty for this, I'm going to put it a seven. Okay. Go ahead and roll. We got a five, a one, and I have a plus one in my fight, so I roll an eight. An eight. <laughs> the scroll returns back and slams to the ground as you see it trying to struggle up. In this moment, it stops fighting and lays down. Are you casting this? Mind Siphon. I must ask you first, how far deep are you wanting to go into James Leland's mind? Can I say something too? I am, I wanted to say if this assists him in any way, I am sitting here fully, with, like he, James is fully willing and opening his whole mind he wants okay. this to he wants every chance for this to succeed so he's like dig is like he tells he looks at Alistair and says go as deep do what you got to do go as deep as far as you need to i'm going as deep as i can then please okay so you're wanting this probably if we're doing this this is reality bending. 
You are extracting memories for yourself to see. So that will start with five. This is one person, so that's five, six, seven, eight. The duration of effect is a few minutes, so that's nine. An experience with this spell. First time casting. That adds a plus five. So 14. The DC is 14. I will let you make a brains check. Be aware of your adversity tokens. And I will say the only person who can aid in adversity tokens for this will be James Leland, if he has any. Sorry, one sec. I'm getting to my adversity tokens page. Okay, cool. No worries. I rolled a 14. A 14. 12 and a 2. You all see these memories expand out from the vision of James Leland before you. You see the terrain, the forest, the tower, all of it peels away as this strong magic is cast. The realm of the dead splits. You see a home nestled on the outside of a small town a river nearby you see a child playing walking on one of the logs it's a younger james leland he's got a stick in one hand and a small board in the other as if to be a knight when we see him trip and fall <laughs> As he hovers over the water, stuck in place. Honey, it's time for James. You see a woman sprint out from the home. James, you are walking in this field. Looking back, you can see your friends. Looking forward, you can see your mother worried sick. As she goes to help you, this energy pushes off as she falls to the ground. As you are back up onto the field on the other side of this little river. You see a small young James Leland approach. Mama says, like, just stay back. Just stay back. No longer worried. Terrified. The scene changes. You can see two adult figures next to a fridge. I'm just saying this isn't what I signed up for. I don't know what's going on with him. I... Listen, I know that fatherhood, nobody knows what to do about, but this is different, babe. I understand we're all scared. The woman speaks. But I just don't want him to know we're scared because I don't want to get hurt. Our view pans to the stairwell at the bottom stairs. James Leland witnesses his parents talking about him. He saunters up the stairs slowly, head down. I think mom and dad are scared of you. We see a new scene. Young sibling playing with toys. Sometimes they don't want me playing with you. James, you're seeing young James just kind of smile. James is weeping at this point. This same room changes. We see a crib. We see shadows fill in the corner of the room. 
is a black cloaked figure enters in. Shh, little one. As he reaches into the crib. We see on the side of the crib in baby blue letters, James. I have such a purpose for you. You have no idea. You are the result of eons of preparation. The figure holds the child and removes the hood of Lord Corbinwall. As his thumb fingernail places upon the small child's lip and quickly slashes. See a small trickle of blood. The baby begins to cry. James, what are you doing? Um, I'm at this point, I went from sitting to I'm now on my knees, just sobbing and muttering. Just, I'll kill him. Such great plans for your kind. as he cuts into his palm and drips the blood landing on the small cut as he places the baby back and turns at you, Ingram. A plan of ages. stepping into the shadow. We see James' parents smiling, happy, as James is packing a bag, about 15 at this time. We just think it's going to be splendid that, that you can go and do what you were made to do. Whatever lies on the other side, we're happy for you. But we don't see a smile on James's face. He knows why they're happy. They're being released. You see a tall figure. Mr. Leland. Are you ready to head with me to my institute? I'm going to show you that you are not a danger. You're a miracle. My name is Ponson. And I would like to offer you an escape. You see young James take his hand. <laughs> they disappear. The spell concludes. I, f I f like, I fall over on my, like, I fall back on, like, my butt, and I'm like, I scoot back up to the rock and just... I know I told you to go deep, but I wasn't expecting that. Um, I'm sorry. And I, and I start rubbing my eyes and just, but I, I, but I, I'm like locking eyes with Ingram though. Your dad's a piece of fucking work. That's putting it lightly. Um, how many children did he do that to? is my bigger question. I thought he hated us. He does. Then what the hell am I? Like, what was the, what's, the, I appreciate everything I have now, but I lost my whole family. 
My father does that. Ruins families. As you can see, it isn't just Valians that are ruined by him now. <clears throat> and on behalf of the Corbin Wall name, I am sorry, James. I am. Uh, it appears we're blood now. I laugh. Uh, James laughs and just kiss it away. Um, I don't have any... There's no hate towards you. But... Your dad is... Uh, that that's think, that's that needs to that needs to be stopped. I think we're all seeing the bigger picture here. I think so. A little bit better. And that just fucking worked. And I, I get up absolutely incredible. No, yeah, I get up and run up to Alistair and just like I'm just I like, fucking hug fucking, you, dude. No, I no, no, yeah, you. no, I do too. No, I'm like, it fucking worked. All of you. Award yourselves one free reroll. Okay. Because I love this idea of all of you in this heavy moment realizing that you just bended reality with magic together and witness something that has not yet been recorded in Valian history. The sudden shock of it worked. The horizons are open. For the first time, you're not held down by doctrine or thesis. Studying and or deep intrigue into different schools of magic, you are living it. Unfortunately, in the realm of the dead. And as this reminder strikes, Lovey, did you have something to say? I think of this moment as because like Lovey is on the outside of this. She has she has not found a connection to like this weird story that's unraveling in in these visions around her. So I, I think in this moment she feels really kind of more offbeat than she usually does, and I think she starts like kind of like letting the the guys like slap each other up, and she's like looking up and just being like. So do you think they are? Do do you think they're watching us? Like, are we just experiencing this alone? And and our teacher is like maybe maybe watching us, or are they all watching us? Because we can't be alone here, right? Like, like we just did that. Did they see that? I don't know if, even if they are watching us, there's been no intervention. No, I didn't think they'd intervene, but you know, like that's, that's kind of like crazy, you know, like, I sure hope nobody's that's a, watching that's a big cause... deal. What you just did there is a really big deal. Yeah, but it's from the forbidden section and we'll both get kicked out of school. But I just go to the library to I... talk to the cats. I didn't know that you could do that by going to the library. I would have done more things with my time. Wait, you also talk to cats? It's a different story for a different day anyways, never mind. <laughs> she like, she just starts like frantically like, she's wearing like a, a, a skirt and stuff. She just kind of like pats herself down, just like frantically. <laughs> doesn't but want I've to bring it up again. Oh, yeah, it's just like. Hold on. I've seen you talk to your bat. How am I? Yeah. Well, of course I talk to him. He's my, he's, he's, you know, he's my pet. I yeah, love him. When I talk to my raven, and Callisto just kind of like, he doesn't respond. He's fairly dumb. Yeah, he's beautiful, but he's dumb. Ah! You're, you're, you're I wait, you don't, you don't like hear him talk to you? Like you don't? No. That's... You hear Alamar talk to you? Well, yeah, of course I do. You like, mean I... this whole time no one's heard me but you? Oh, God. And he's very animated. And I take it oh, we I'm don't hear him saying pet. anything, right? Only you hear, I know, <laughs> you hear like. Why? He's my pet for a reason. 
Yeah, just squeaks. Yeah, just like little, just little squeaks. squeaks and like the flapping of wings, just like. <laughs> he's like he's literally like because uh, she wears like one of those big, um, big capes as well in the color of her house, um, and she just like kind of pulls it up and he's there. Uh, so she kind of reaches in her bag and like as he's screaming at her, she just fills his mouth with like dried fruit. Yeah, I look at her. I'm just like, yeah, I had a cat growing up. I never, Frizzy never talked to me. Well, did you ever talk to Frizzy enough to give it the, a chance to talk back? All the time. Wait, can you talk to Callisto? Callisto? And I'll like eye the bird. I will ask, uh, is, is Calypso male, female, or non-binary? Uh, Callisto, Callisto's a dude. Perfect. He's the homie. <laughs> you try to talk to Calypso? Callisto. Or Callisto. Callisto. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, I just go, Callisto? And then I, like, I give the, the eyebrow wiggle to the bird. Ah! But it's staring at you. And as you begin to look at it, your eyes glow a violet color. And its eyes match. And you feel your wand beginning to move. Take it out. I hold it. Hello? I like talk. I think I talk into it like a microphone. I think that's what Lovey ends up doing. Is like she takes it out and just like hello. Give me a charm check. Okay. With your magic die. Okay. The DC for this is going to be a six. Okay. That's a six on the dot. Six on the two. dot. Yes. As you say this. The wand stops moving as your eyes begin to glow that violet color. What is it you would ask at my bequest? Oh, um, okay. Uh, well, I, is you that anything? all hear it. Is there anything you would like to say? Calisto, I think I think uh, I think your friend here wants to maybe you know know what you're thinking. Your bird taught. Yeah, uh, yeah. And you see, it looks at you, and the mouth, the beak opens. Ah! But you can still hear. I believe House Corbin Wall could increase my portions of food tenfold. If I'm being honest, okay. my liege. Okay. Tenfold food. Okay. Is there an, is there anything else? Any important inquiries or or you know questions, comments, concerns for the house? You sound very fancy. You sound very nice. House Corbin Wall must change it's a little cryptic but okay the atrocities this house has committed should not stand and i have been tasked with this one and yet it is pure Although I wish he would remove his mask. I like look over to see if Ingram's like wearing a mask and I'm just like, <laughs> really? Because that catches her off guard. Like she's, it's just one of those things. Um. So, yeah. Um. Apparently you gotta change. I have, I have to change? Your house. I You're just doing things. Like, I don't know. I, the bird's being cryptic, okay? 
He's just saying you got to do things. You got to change what you've been doing is really blasphemous. And, and, and at the, at the end of the, you know, there's just, there's just a lot of things that are wrong. I think you the are wife the of the viper dies. For. And what that might bring change to the world. Who's the viper? Who do you think? My father. <clears throat> Wait, why would your mom have to die for things to change though? Why wouldn't he have to die? Why doesn't he die and your mom, what? Why'd your mom have to suffer? What if this was all a way for us to meet? You think Ponson did this elaborate this elaborate scheme to I don't think Ponson would murder somebody, but I do think there's a much larger thing at play. I I would agree. I heard it from your mother's mouth. Wait, we're in the realm of the dead. What if we found my mother and heard it directly from her to us? And, and then, then you can, re you you can, can replay the memory. That memory in front of Ponson in the council. My father has to be rid of everything. He would have to. And, and then I could even pull the memories from your father. Not, at this point, you can pull the memories from any one of us. We've all seen something. But the thing is, is how do we get my father in front of Ponson to pull the memory? Uh, Where are Your father here? is a noble house. I was going to say, Lord just tell him you're having a fancy party. Anything like mm. that. They, you, your dad would eat that up. I don't know. I think if He's we tell Ponson and show Ponson, your father has to answer as the Lord of a noble house. Too. Image is everything to him. It kind of has to happen. But if he accused of something like that is. If he goes down, my sister takes over. And that's the start of a new change. A Colvin Wall. We need to move. We need to. I mean, the more things that we can find out here, that's just. That's more ammunition. How do we even find your mother? How? I don't think you can, I don't know if we've realized, but this is, this seems ever expansive in here. When he says that, can, I have a question. I have Treasure Hunter. Mm -hmm. Can I use, oh, I don't, oh, never mind. Can I, I find a, his mom? I, no, <laughs> no, I was, no. Can I find his mom with Treasure Hunter? Hey, no, no. I can find one useful thing in this scene. His mom. mom. Something I was, gonna, I was gonna suggest something to help find her, but I don't have an sure. university token to spend on it, so never mind. No worries. You. Uh, what were you going to say, Ingram? Are you wanting to sacrifice one of yours? If I can, I'll allow it. And I, yeah, the adventure just... is perilous. Take this. <laughs> uh, the balloon. <laughs> But yeah, no, I, I'm just trying to, it basically just says I find something useful in my surroundings. Nothing super crazy, but maybe something to help Ness find his, find what we're looking for. You begin to feel a warmth. It's coming from the ground. You move some of the rubble. There's a small compass. It's got multiple designs on its outline or like on the rim of this like sapphire gemmed compass. And as you pick it up, it begins to spin. The terrain begins to change and move. You recognize this immediately, Ingram. It's your home. You look down at the compass as it cracks once. Still usable, but one solid crack. Hopefully it lasts at least a few more times, and I tuck it in my 
in my bag. Where are we? My own. So I didn't. I didn't realize. I didn't realize you were talking to me. I was like, <laughs> side eyeing everybody. <laughs> yeah, I, was like, uh, I, I love how everybody in this know. in this moment, everybody's looking at each other, and then Ingram's like, "Oh, my house. Sorry, this is my house. <laughs> this is this is my my home. I was there this morning." So did that compass get us out of the realm of the dead? You hear something moves. I just, nope. <clears throat> All of the candles begin to dim. What are you all doing? I, uh, I'm, I pull, I, I pull my staff out of my bag and just have that with me after hearing that noise. Is there a window next to the door? There is no door that you can see behind you. Okay. You are just in this foyer. You see okay. large chandeliers, three, in this great hall, all lit with candles. As the light begins to dim, you can see shadows moving. Um, I think in this moment... Lovey is going to take out her arcane utility knife or like, yeah, her arcane utility knife. And I'm going to leave this up to DM discretion and this utility knife. Does she have like a little like, like needle and thread? Like, is there a needle and thread sure. in this? Okay. Sure. I'll allow it. She's going to take the thread and, um, is there like a, a cross section of like, are we in a room that leads like in two different so directions? It leads into this great hall and you can see it's almost like darkness all around. You can see the slight idea of stone walls. But it okay. goes forward and then branches down two different paths. One to the right, one to the left. Nothing in front, just a stone wall. Okay, she's going to take a bunch of this thread and kind of like ball it up in her hand and create like a really big like knot almost out of a bunch of thread. And she's going to um, cast a spell. Like she's going to walk to the end of this corridor being very careful, but cast a spell when she gets to the end and see if she can meld that little like woven thing that she's made into this into like this wall fixture whatever it is to kind of mark where they need to go or where they came from just in case they get lost sure okay it's like it's like this like little yarn like almost kind of like the way that she's tumbled and fussed with it it's almost like a little flower like a little red flower and she's just wanting to almost pin it to the wall with magic like making sure Yes, to make sure that, like, whatever these up creatures are maybe can't take it off or whatever could be after us won't take it. Okay, sure. I'll say with, with that, yeah. Um, for this, I'll say... I'm, I'm unsure of what the magic element is. Like, she wants to turn it into, like, stone to affix to the wall. Like, she just wants to, like, make it as, like, a marker, like, a permanent marker so that they know if they're coming down the hallway or if they're running or something and they see it, that is the direction that they originally came from. Because she doesn't know so if there's a like door or anything. just, mark. Yeah, just, like, a little glyph. But she just wants to make it out of thread and then kind of, like, emboss it into the wall. Perfect. So we'll start at a default of three. Okay. Uh, this is tiny, so that's four. Um, and you're wanting this to last how long? Um, I'll say 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Okay, so that's plus one, which makes that five. Five. 
And then experience with this spell, you've cast this a few times before? I'd say once or twice. Not super often, but something that she knows that she can do. Perfect. Then the DC will be six and we'll get a brains check. Brains, okay. Um... That's a five. Okay. You affix it. Did you roll your magic die? I did not. That's a one. So Perfect. plus one is six. <laughs> <laughs> it ingrains itself into the wall and begins to glow. As you are casting that, James, you heard that movement behind you. The scroll. You look down to the ground and it's gone. The scroll you tethered back to the earth is no longer there. Do I know what that particular scroll was? Didn't see it clear enough. I'm looking, I just start looking around the room because I heard, I heard a noise and I know that it's not there. So I'm, I'm looking around, trying to see if I... You look to the right, and you begin to see this painted glass mosaic of large, towering, great ravens. Wingspan open, and in the slight glass that is not colored, but almost translucent, you can see wraith-like forms moving with the clasp of House Corbinwall. As they begin to move past. As you affix this rose, you begin to hear to the left, Lovey. And you can feel immense heat begin to walk backwards. Hello there. I mean no harm. As I'm like slowly walking back. You can see scorch marks approaching you. And you can see what looks like Steam dripping from no mouth, but there is a presence in this hallway. Okay, I can sense that you're angry. That's fine. We're intruding on your home. Not How about safe? What, what? Us or here? Not safe. Run. Run. Do we I'm all hear gonna... this? You do not. Okay. You just, at this point, she's kind of like gone a lo- little feral in her stance and kind of like crouched on the ground to like meet this presence's aura. Um, okay. Run. Um, we don't quite have that option right now. So, can you maybe tell us where it is a little less dangerous to go? You feel the presence begin to back up. As you all see from the right side of the corridor, behind Lovey, a shadowy form passes through the walls in a gnarled finger holding a wand. Die! As this blast shoots out, Lovey, you hear this crackling energy shoot out. What are you doing in this moment? 
I think uh, she immediately instinctively entangles herself uh, within like a little bramble nest. Okay. Uh, so it's uh, since she has kind of her wand like at the ready almost always. Um, I think she like holds it very close to herself. And in this moment when she hears that, she'll just whisper in Pigliato to herself and try to encapsulate her in that bramble. Okay. Do you want to go ahead and give me, uh, you're using magic for this? Yes. And Perfect. it is a spell that I am proficient in. Perfect. So we'll have you do that. And the DC, I believe, for that would be four, correct? Yes. Uh, what am I rolling? Is it for fight, flight? For, for this, Ring. if you're trying to hunker down, it would be a grit roll. Grit? Oh, cool. Grit with your magic die. Cool. And they're going to be casting this at you. Seven plus two is nine. Nine. That beats it. As you hear this crackling energy, you see this ray shoot out from this wand as these brambles pull up and over. You see they slam into one another. The brambles beginning to burn. This arcane energy beginning to dissipate around Lovey as you see more of these floating wraith-like figures all with House Corbin Wall begin to aim down towards you all. What are we doing? I take my staff and I slam it down in front of me and I start charging a, like, missile. Like, all right, I have arcane missiles. Like, my arcane missiles. Um, I'm just charging, like, a missile barrage, basically. Just like a bunch. I'm just going to sit there and just use as much energy as I can to just keep charging them until I see an opportunity to, when I, if they come at us, I'm, I'm launching. How many are you launching? Um, I would say I'm, I usually pull up three when I use it because I mastered this spell. I'm charging, so we'll say I'm trying to get like 12. If you're trying to do 12, that will be reality bending. So that starts at five okay. and you're trying to do uh, bigger than a person, smaller than a classroom, or a classroom size or bigger? It's pro it's smaller than a classroom. Okay, so we'll go no, 10. The missiles, the missiles are only about that big, I would say. Perfect. So 10, and then duration of effect, instantaneous. Yep. And you've mastered this. However, you're trying to do a bit more. So I'm going to say 10 instantaneous, so that's zero, plus two. So a 12 for this roll, and this will be a fight check with your magic die. All right. So. And if you're launching that, they are going to roll as well. Fight is D8 plus magic, okay. So it's a 12? 12. 12. I have to roll perfect for this to even work. So let's go. Uh, didn't happen, but let's see. No, I rolled an eight. An eight. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Did you did you get a, a plus? You did you add your plus one to to your fight because you're an. So that's a nine. That, that's a nine then. And what did you need? A twelve. Twelve. Okay. You have a free um, reroll. You do yeah, have a free reroll. I'm gonna use that on this D8 actually then. Okay. Or do I just re-roll both die? I'll say re-roll both die. Okay. I didn't specify if it was a single die. Let's One more shot. Yeah, let's see. It was worse, so... Ooh. Yeah, it was As worse. you rocket these missiles out, <laughs> they begin slamming into the stone. But you see one of them gets caught with a wand and flung back. I'm going to need either a flight or grit check from you. From me? Yes. Can um, I? I'll do grit. Sure. So I have I have Guardian. I'm going to step in front of him and cast Warden's Redirect. And when I do that, uh, uh, it says here, when defending another player and NPC, always roll both your stat die and magic die and add them together, even if you're not using magic. But I am going to use Warden's Redirect, which is a spell that I am 
Okay. Master. Perfect. I've mastered. And for that grit check, I rolled a, a dirty 20. Beautiful. So would this be a grit check for me? This would be a grit check, correct. Okay. Actually, this would be a flight check if you're redirecting. I'm pretty much just, it's pretty much, I'm just like trying to stop it. It's just, it's pretty much shield, the shield spell. Perfect, perfect. Then we'll say, we'll say grit. Okay. Um, grit is the deep. That is six, okay. um, and I'm going to you. Well, what was the DC? You're rolling against him. You won okay. by one. Okay, so, sick. As this warden's redirect goes up uh, in front of you, James, you take the opportunity using that 19. As this missile slams in, the shield <laughs> brought up uh, by your ally Ingram as it slams this missile blast, as flame begins to shoot up into the air, you see the banner of House Corbimol begins to burn. As these wraith-like figures begin to move, you see underneath their wraith-like appearance, the handle of broomsticks. <laughs> they are moving. James, with that 19, you move to the other side, and as you spin around, what are you doing to take this next action? If they're if they're coming at me with brooms, I'm gonna dodge, and I'm gonna cast levitate on myself and fly like fly up. Perfect. I'll say with that 19, I'm not even gonna have you roll for that. You move and begin to levitate up. Lovey, we're up to you. What are you doing? So I think at this point the brambles have burnt away. Lovey's still standing up. Um, I think. She is going to, um, she's going to turn in the direction of most of them, and she is going to, uh, take out her wand and cast basically just, like, like, light, and just try to, uh, create this searing light that is very bright within the room. Hopefully these wraiths will, the shadows will go away. Okay, perfect. And how often have you, how big of a light are you wanting to cast? A class, cl like the size of the room. So if the size is the size of a classroom, then classroom size. So massive. Sure, let's perfect. go big or go yeah. home. So that'll be a seven and this is, could happen, but not naturally. So seven, eight, nine, 10. And we'll say duration for, of effect instantaneous. Yeah. Okay. So that's seven, do, 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 do. And experience with this spell, I'm gonna put two on there since this is a large sort of radius. So seven, eight, nine, uh, and go ahead and give me, I'm gonna say a brains check for this one. And as you're doing this, Alistair, you see that Lovey is beginning to cast. You see these wraiths now on their broom with a full scope of what's going on. What are you planning? Is there a vase in the room? Any, any type of you can see some mix, mix match like decoration that is kind yeah. of around. There are some vases and any type like of vessel. Is there a vessel? Yes. I'd like to run up and grab it and cast uh, encapsulate. Okay. Kind of from learning about gins and genies and stuff, pulling that knowledge out. Okay, perfect. And what did you get for your roll, Lovey? I got a ten. A ten. Perfect. I'm gonna roll for them. Perfect, and that. Nine, and they even explode on their magic die. You see Ugh. as this light, <laughs> they all begin to move and you see this burning and these hateful red eyes begin to burn as one of them shoots down for you. Alistair, you grab this pot as it is racing down towards Lovey with this broom you hold this thing up and you are casting what? Encapsulate. Encapsulate, perfect. So you are wanting the magnitude of this effect, you're wanting to siphon it in? Yes, yeah, I okay. wanted to hold this being inside of it. Okay, I'm gonna say this is reality bending a bit. Yeah. So that'll start off at a five. 
uh, plus three for a person, so five, six, seven, eight. Uh, duration of effect, how long are you wanting to encapsulate? An hour. One hour, so that'll be eight, nine, ten. Have you cast this spell before? Only learned about it. Okay. That's going to be a 14. 14. And I'm going to say that this is flight. As you are to me. redirecting it in, you can roll your magic die. As your grimoire begins to levitate and glow as you hold this over, standing next to Lovey as this wraith is kind of coming in this husk mancer. I'm going to use my free reroll. Okay. <laughs> Fuck. A four. A four altogether? Yeah, I rolled a one on my d12. Okay. Oof. As you go to encapsulate it into this sort of vessel, this glass vase, it shatters as you feel a cut along the bottom of your neck as you fly backwards, the wraith reaching out, grabbing onto your neck and flying you upwards. You begin to go up into the darkness. And we'll head back in. Uh, Ingram, you are seeing this now. James, you are seeing this. Lovey, you are seeing this wraith taking him higher and higher. But Lovey, you begin to see the apparition of flame on this hound as it begins running forward, jumping up and biting into uh, this sort of wraith-like figure, dragging it down as it begins to burn. Is the yeah, wraith good dog! Good dog! <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm, I was because I flew up when that when he were they. You're half up. the distance that everyone else is, so you can catch up if you would like. Yeah, I'm trying to catch up to uh, if he's grabbing him. Yeah, I'm trying to catch up. And you can hear as you're kind of racing up and getting closer, levitating as fast as you can. You're struggling to breathe as you feel this wraith grasping you. You can feel black veins begin to appear is you're feeling your blood run cold as this wraith holds you. You could ruin everything. House Whelm should lie in ashes! That is what you hear. Can you I are try? levitating up closer. What are you wanting to do? I wanted to try and cast one... Uh, it's a s spell. Since I, uh, I always let Alistair into the forbidden section. I remember a forbidden spell, a time a time bending spell. I can only rewind just a couple seconds, like and not everything. Like I can do it to something. I read about it. I want to try and rewind them back a couple seconds towards me. This is going to be insanely difficult. I know. Okay. This is reality breaking. So it will start at a difficulty of seven. Now you're trying to affect this entire room. No, I'm just trying or to Or just affect these two. Just these two. I'm just trying to, just those two. So seven plus five. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, because numbers. And the duration, you want to go back a few seconds. Mm hmm What are we at right now? Twelve? Yeah. So that's going to be 13. And you've never cast this before. Just read about it. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I'm, I'm probably not. I don't even think it's possible, but I wanted to try. <laughs> Go ahead and roll. <clears throat> what am I, what, what would you say this is? is it a... I'm going to say for this one, it's going to be a brains check. Okay. With your magic die. All right, all right. Is my D12? Sorry, there it is. All right, let us. The D4 exploded, and this was cocked, so it was cocked again. But I'll 
Roll it elsewhere. <laughs> this is my only Roll it tray. Somewhere else. <laughs> it's my only dice tray. I'm sorry. God damn, I'm taking this. God, it flew you're out. Kidding hey, me. I'll take it. I'll show you. <laughs> An eleven. Okay. The D4 exploded, so let me re-roll that. So that's 15. Yep. And it exploded. I hit another four. I Let's go! I swear to fucking God. Let's go! So I'm, I'm literally, you. I'm pulling you you both back towards me, and I'm grabbing Alistair and going back down towards me. As you do it, the, you see... Go ahead. The moment that he brings Alistair and this Wraith back, I cast Prism Bolt at the Wraith. As you are pulling, you see this wraith stuck in time, holding. No! You see, you begin to pull Alistair back as you feel this hand is let go of you. You can feel your blood returning to normal as you begin to fall uh, into the grasp of your levitating ally of James Leland. James, you begin to feel your hand singeing with blue arcane energy as you grasp onto Alistair. Time removed as you bring down, you shoot up this prism bolt. <laughs> Go ahead and roll for me for that fight check against this raid. What's the, the well, well, it's difficulty for this is this is a spell you have mastered. You're casting it on somebody who is a person. So that starts with a three. Well, I'll just hit you with this. I rolled a 20. Perfect. And that four I'm going to if, if, if I need to go any higher. <laughs> no, you have met the DC because technically he is stuck in time. Because part of the duration of this was a few seconds. As this, cr this prism bolt <laughs> shoots off, you see this wraith. It is hit as you see the large beard begin to appear this visage of your great grandfather <sighs> yeah. you were supposed to bring us into greatness and you've led them here yeah! as you see his entire visage begins melting and ripping apart as you are casting this prism bolt so pretty much what it, what I'm what I'm imagining how this is looking is go off my light the light that hits him is almost as if it is a beam from the sun and he turns into a prism and just the rainbow just shatters everywhere. The glass structure of his remaining form shatters as you see he has been destroyed. As you look up and another one is casting a bolt directly at you. I would <laughs> like to take, cause I'm still casting this light. I had casted that light. So I want right. to take kind of like the feedback from my spell and the the spell that he has with his prism. And I want to steal a shred of that prism and redirect it with the same spell to the other wraith. Okay, go ahead and roll as this one is rolling to shoot at your ally. So flight. Uh, correct. Okay. That's my d20 stat, so we up in here, baby. Let's go. That explodes. That explodes. Cool. What did you 16. get? 16. That will beat my 14. Ah! Oh my As God. this bolt is shot down towards you, I do need you to tell me how... So are you taking this bolt that's being shot at Ingram and turning it onto the other race using the prism? No. So I'm taking, like, uh, I'm taking actually, like, one of the shards, like, how he turns into the prism. Sure. I'm taking one of those as it kind of, like, diffracts. And it using it out to... And I'm, yes. Perfect. And using it to expand upon and redirect as, like, a shard. <laughs> You see some of the other wraiths not destroyed, but begin slamming out these mosaic tiles of these beautifully done murals of glass windows as they shatter out through them. Uh, however, that bolt is charged and shot at you, Ingram. How are you deflecting? 
Warden's redirect again. Okay, go ahead and roll for me. Oh and you are God. rolling off. Rolling off? Okay. Correct. The number you have to beat is a 15. I have to beat a 15? Correct. The 16, baby. 16. Because 11 plus 4, and then I get a plus 1. <laughs> As this bolt shoots back, you take it and the warden's redirect. <laughs> oh, wait, I guess As that it is blasts a 15. off. It's a 15, but I'm going to use. I'm going to use. Meets it, beats it. Oh, okay. So meets it, beats it. So you redirect this as this ray bursts out the window. And these wraiths are currently not here, these husk mancers. And as. Go ahead, Alistair. Did I see what that final wraith kind of looked like? It looked younger. I want to try to cast Encapsulate again as he's leaving. Okay, are you grabbing another vessel? Yeah. Do you remember the DC to... for Encapsulate? 14. 14, okay. Make the roll. And it was with my flight check, correct? Yes. Okay. I'm going to use... Uh, I wouldn't even be able to get it. Never mind. I got oh a 10. God. You got a 10? How many yeah. How many adversity tokens do you have? Three? I can give you one more. 14. 14. Meets it, beats it. As you feel this energy is being pulled into this glass vase. So uh, to, to show, like, I'm going to pretty much just, like, as a means of helping... I'm going to pretty much just like use my my wand to pretty much try and like bring this fucker closer. You grab onto the side of the vase as well, reaching out your wand. You see this wraith form is trying to escape. And it is struggling. And as you kind of grab onto this vase and point at it with your wand, it goes in. And as it does, your hand begins to burn, holding this urn. <laughs> Do you drop it to the ground? No. I'm going to try and I, I hold fast and I set it down lightly. You hold fast and <clears throat> you set it down lightly. Cracks of dark energy begin to appear on your arm. You release is your hand begins to change into what looks like that of rock and just exposed inner arcane energy of this swirling black and white noise that begins to emanate from your hand. Kind of a stretch of a question, but does it feel malevolent? It does not. It Sick. feels powerful. And Sick. that is where we are going to end Hell yeah. this episode. Oh, Thank you fuck. so much, everybody, for watching. <laughs> Thank you that so much, so everyone. Cool. <laughs> we will see you for the next episode very soon. I'm, I believe these are all coming out somewhat close to one another, but we're excited. We can't wait to show you the very end of this awesome adventure. Thank you so did, much for watching. I did Chronomancy. You did Chronomancy. You did Chronomancy. <laughs> Time I, I, did chronomancy. I, just, I projected your memories. You did, and it was really sad. <laughs> I did light magic. That's cool too, right? <laughs> Thank Animal <you> talk. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for watching. We can't wait to see you for this finale of this awesome series. We will see you the next time we decide to roll dice. <laughs>